Um, there is one more insidious drama that has crept up, has consumed the universe, uh, that I will try to summarize to the best of my ability. Though I should remind you uh, that this is a thing that was covered by other people that I'm kind of late to the game to. I don't have any any uh, any skin in the game. I'm just going to try to summarize this as accurately as I can based off what I've seen. Uh, I did try to watch the, um, I picked the, I had a choice between listening to Nick to Oreo or Mutahar. And I decided I have enough curry in my life already. So I picked Nick to Oreo, which is a mistake. Um, Nick to Oreo's video editing skills are uh, abysmal. The way he adds a grainy VHS effect to absolutely everything and then like his interstitial frames between segments is like different backgrounds, colors, fonts, font sizes, font styles. And it's just like a, it's like an actual hideous nightmare. And then he talks. And if you think my voice is annoying, you're right. But uh, he's got a really, really like high pitch whiny voice. And uh, it's also particularly gradating, great grading to listen to. Um, but he covered something called Mama Max. I have spoken about ma about these pedophile vigilantes every so often. Um, I'm not a fan of that kind of content. It just doesn't appeal to me because uh, I, I kind of see it as dangerous. I think that, you know, these amateurs trying to make money off of doing what is effectively police work um, can come at a detriment to actual police investigations. I always feel like the people involved in it are not involved in the right reasons. They always come across to me as like abusive types that have found a target that nobody is willing to stand up for. And people just sort of tolerate their behavior because, um, they're fucking with pedophiles. So who gives a shit, but they give me like heebie jeebie vibes. Um, they, they seem like people I don't want any involvement with because, they come across as kind of dangerous. And uh, I apparently had been proven right when at least one person involved in this because they uh, this guy is called Mama Max. And there's actually a really great thread on him on the Kiwi Farms. It's made by this guy called Not Based or Red Pill. But this was made in 2022. So it just contains all his drama like from 2022 prior, which gives you like a really solid groundwork uh, into how his channel got started. And it probably shouldn't come as any surprise that before he found his footing as Mama Max, as like a pedophile hunter, he um, was involved in many different kinds of like grifts that all didn't didn't amount to anything. So he's like deleted and recreated his YouTube channel a dozen times, tried to get involved in like a dozen different kinds of content, which includes hentai reviews at some point. Um, all And his ex-girlfriends are like, Oh, but this is one of his other failed ventures. I was in the United States Army before I was discharged for attempting to commit suicide. So he was in the military. He didn't have any skills. He just got, got out of high school, didn't know what to do with his life, got involved in the military, was in training. Um, he was in Oklahoma for a year, uh, threatened to commit suicide allegedly, and got an other than honorable discharge for mental health reasons. Then he started doing YouTube videos, uh, such as reviewing hentai, and um, found his footing in pedophile hunting eventually. Uh, he has he has had girlfriends that are obviously like drug addict losers. Now, this person was an OnlyFans whore. Um, she, her Instagram just had like picture, like almost nude photos of her. She was involved in like cosplay, uh, wearing like Lalita shit. Uh, this is unsubstantiated. This paragraph, but I find it interesting. I wish that he had. Um, provided a source for it but um max met olivia after a breakup with his previous girl some of the first traits he noticed in her that she was small like a child and apparently and i have to take his word on this that he also portrays her in life sucks heartbreak as the main character taiga from toradora and this is taiga from toradora she is four foot eight so she is firmly in the short category of anime characters am i buffering Oh, sorry. I do notice that my um, that my stream bandwidth is low. That's strange. Why is my kilobytes? Sorry. Is everything okay now? I just had a small outage with my um, my stream software. 
Um, okay, I'll just repeat myself real quick. Uh, so, uh, just the last part. Uh, he was dating like an OnlyFans girl. Um, she had posted like almost nude images on Instagram. Uh, there is an unsubstantiated quote that uh, he had found interest in Olivia be um, because she was small like a child, and that he says in when his life in his playthrough of Life Sucks Heartbreak. He portrayed her as Taiga from Tor Torga, what is this? Toradora, uh, and she's a four foot eight short. So do with that information as you will. I do not have substance to back this up with. That is merely what is claimed in this post. Um, and then at some point he gets involved in the pedo hunting stuff, and he has this trend. This is the, one of the actually the most interesting things as far as. Um, this intro uh, post about him goes. Uh, this is a post from him when he was banned or he had a video taken down on YouTube for violating the TOS. He says, hashtag pick aside YouTube children or pedophiles at team YouTube at Susan Wajiki. And he has emojis for all of this at Philly D at H3H3 at Keemstar at John Scares at Moist Critical at Chris Hansen at Shane Dawson at Corpse Husband. Uh, 33,000 likes. So this guy is like extremely notable. He has a large following. And when he says that YouTube is encouraging pedophilia by not doing something, thousands of people will believe him and millions of people will see this post. Now, which is interesting because uh, it appears that he's a liar. Um, he had a st live streamed interview with um, Mutahar and Nick DeOrio and he was confronted on his corpus of work uh, as a as a pedophile hunter, and this started because uh, you saw that he t tweeted at Moist Critical. He had tried to compel Charlie, who I don't have any love for, but in this instance, um, it's hard not to take his side because he is in the right. This guy trying to promote his pedophile hunting channel uh, tried to compel Moist Critical to talk about videos that he had put out. The gist is that somebody he has a direct knowledge of, um, this black guy who considers himself a werewolf, he is accusing of running a pedophile cult. And without any kind of evidence or substance of this, uh, and only based off one woman's testimony, says that this black guy ran a werewolf pedophile cult and had molested potentially hundreds of children or groomed them or got nude images or whatever. But he had no substance to back this up with. And in the eight hours of video content he had put up trying to expose this werewolf pedophile cult, um, he was unable to substantiate a single one of his claims. Which, when he tried to compel Moist Critical to talk about this, he refused. And so he chimped out and started calling Moist Critical a pedophile enabler because he was not promoting his videos to his liking. Uh, Charlie complained about this, which got Mudahar and Nick DiOrio as, like, um, I don't know what you call it, like YouTube drama people to try and talk to him. And the result of the conversation was that he basically admitted live on camera that he had never helped a single child, that he outright fabricated some of his videos, um, that he fake rape stories um, to promote his content and so on and so forth. Basically everything he has done is a swindle and a f fraud um, and not a single person was a beneficiary of his work. There was not a single person that um, was saved or helped as a result of his pedophile hunting and it appears to be all fake. Um, let's see, I'll read the uh, thing here. He used a fake drama to bait and switch by exposing more people to a random black guy named Camden. Allegedly, a Max refused word Max never used, so he is like trying to accuse this guy of doing shit without any evidence. Running a vampire werewolf sex cult. No concrete evidence is provided. Um, he had done this multiple times to try and pester celebrities to talk about um, his videos. The commentary channels, that's, that's what I was working for. Commentary people. The commentary people get, uh, dislike his bait and switch video. They approach him for it. Max invites them on to a debate uh, alongside one of his survivors, Spencer, who's living with him. So one of the people that he said, the person who he's living with is this uh, woman who claims to have been a victim of Camden's vampire werewolf pedophile sex cult. But he's, or she's living with him as he's promoting this story. Um, he refuses to provide any evidence. He asks for people to sign an NDA. Um, da, da, da. They look into his, his history. Uh, info on the alleged predator and the supposed 
uh, the cult is very scarce. Um, he has the black guy has no criminal record except for like a, a driving without a license charge. There's a police report from years ago, uh, but the detectives did not find enough evidence, and uh, so on. So then they call to him. It does not end well. Max admits to fabricating a victim's traumatic story of rape and abuse, but he genuinely acts surprised that people believed it was real and not fictional, um, despite the predator supposedly being real. Max is confronted on straight up lying about one of his videos leading to an arrest of a predator. So he's lying about people going to jail because of his, uh, his work. Uh, and also feign surprise that people would, um, would believe him, <laughs> believe him and not just believe that it's all fake. Uh, Nick DiOrio plays his clip back to him, and he has to actually admit that he lied about the entire thing. He has never worked with law enforcement on any of his cases. He has never gotten anyone arrested as a result of his work on YouTube, but he has apparently millions. How many people actually follow this guy? I'm curious. But I didn't look that up. 750,000 subscribers. His, view, his videos get hundreds of thousands of views. That's crazy. Puppystomp.mp4. Bro, this guy is fucking gross. All the, Oh my god, he has all these anime... All these anime videos. <laughs> oh, that's crazy. He used ChatGPT for legal advice. This is what he admits on video. He does not work with real lawyers, but instead uses ChatGPT for legal advice in regards to how to hand, handle pedophile cases. Um, Max has been accused of abuse by his ex-girlfriends, who, as we've established, are like crack whore, um, OnlyFans prostitutes. And he claims that their testimony is fake. And then says that Mag Magnetar, someone who brought who actually brought them together as a pedophile. He can't prove any of this. He doxes Magnetar. And I think at one point, when he's exposing this black guy, Camden, he is um like doxing Camden's entire family. Like he's name dropping his mom and his brother, and he's implying that people should like get involved and look these people up and hound them for evidence about his pedophile vampire werewolf sex cult. Uh, so it's all, it's, I mean, it's incredibly shoddy and fucking juvenile and it's really shocking that, I don't know, people are so gullible. They just get lied to and they just fucking believe it. This guy also calls him a sociopath or, or calls himself a sociopath. Um, he takes pride in that. He's a sociopath. He's a liar and exploiter, but just not a very good one. Apparently if you manage to get mentally outmaneuvered by Nick DeOrio and Mutahar, you got to pack it in. You got to give up. You lost. You don't get to call yourself a sociopath anymore. Um, you can call yourself a low, low IQ psychopath, I guess, but that's about it. You don't get to call yourself um, some master manipulator at that point when Nick Dorio is walking circles around you. And that's the Mutahar stuff. I don't know enough about the specifics because I don't know. It's just not my thing. Um, I don't want to watch pumpy, puppy stomp that MP4 to um, try and understand this character better. Uh, I will assume in good faith that Nick DeOrio has humiliated this man. I, uh, I, I watched, um, I tried to watch like the expose videos and stuff. It's just like, yeah, I get it. He's a fucking liar and he lies for money. And YouTube uh, is the platform to do this one. That's pretty accurate. Mudahar bros, you get a win. Uh, if you're interested in this, as I mentioned, uh, Mudahar and Nick Dorio both have multi-hour long video exposés talking about how this guy um, has effectively made an entire career. Probably millions of dollars. I wonder, his Patreon's still up. I wonder how much money it has. Come on, Patreon, don't let me down. Ooh, it's not public. I wonder if um, Graftreon has it. If, oh, that's really annoying. It doesn't even show how many members he has. You don't get this on Patreon. It doesn't even tell you how many members you have anymore. That's crazy. Though I'm seeing hundreds of replies on some of his posts. Okay, let's see. Hold up. Oh, he's been losing members. Oh my God. Okay, so he had 
He had at at his peak, he had four thousand paid members, and on average, they were paying six dollars a month. So that's twenty four thousand dollars a month at peak. It's then dropping off, so now it's probably half that. But that's still like tens of, not even including YouTube income. It's probably tens of thousands of dollars a month just by lying. <laughs> just by saying, hey guys, I, I um, actually, uh, someone asked me to do this. I don't have a way to, to modulate my voice. Let me check. Make sure there's not like a spooky button that I can press on my, my microphone to filters. Problem is I don't know how to, how to. Yeah, I'm not gonna try. Someone asked me to um to try and modulate my voice. I'll play like a clip of how he talks so you can um you can get a feel for it. Let's see if I can find the Nick Dorio video. That was, oh here, okay. Um is this it? Yeah, this is it. In fact, after Max threatened me privately for not results, we're astounded of understanding Mark or potentially nothing. No, this is just him talking. Supernatural family has a oh, this, March yeah. 2016, Spencer, a girl from Wyoming, Texas, mysteriously disappeared, lured by the illusion of joining a supernatural family as a vampire on some random corner of the internet. She actually found herself ensnared in a dangerous cult led by a predator posing as a werewolf god. Max Stryker's evidence provides without a That's shadow. That's it. That's enough to get you tens of thousands of dollars on YouTube. He just puts a modular and goes, and then that's enough. Everyone was like, oh my God, I will give you memberships in real US dollars and not Argentine pesos. I will subscribe to your Patreon. Thank you, hero, for saving children. Thank you, my lord, for stopping the, pumpy, the puppy stomp. Come the fuck on. Most of his videos are demonetized. Well, good. <laughs> <laughs> considering all things um neil mahan's spicy curry dick w <laughs> don't know what to tell you he does sound like the saw puppet that's right mama max you've dedicated yourself to saving and empowering children but that is a lie now you must choose between what you claim to be and what you actually are. On the left is a child who will be killed unless you manage to pull the lever, which can only be pulled by cutting off your own penis because you are a coomer. Only by freeing yourself from your masturbation addiction can you actually do what you set out to accomplish. Choose wisely. And then that that is the that is the the proper proper trap, the saw trap. I want to play. You want to play the game? Okay. <laughs> my big boy voice. The funny thing, I don't know. I don't try to like deepen my voice when I talk, so I have no idea how that sounds. That probably sounds really goofy. Thank you for watching this clip by Colonel J. This is the King of Bold here. Remember to like and subscribe. Juice.